This week on 3D Printed Soup, is this a real Star Wars weapon? Is this a real Star Wars weapon? Could you tell the difference? That's right after this. Hello, fellow makers, welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. This week I have been a victim of crime. Basically, I've been a victim of fraud. I ordered a Ronan Boba Fett off the internet from a fairly ropey site because I couldn't find one on Amazon or anywhere else and I really wanted one. And what arrived was this. It looks good at a distance. It's the right colour. It's the right height. But this thing is not the real McCoy. Just remove that. The pieces are plasticky. It doesn't feel right. Bits of it come off far, far too easily. It feels cheap and nasty and yeah, it's nowhere near as bendable and as, as you see, bits just fall off. This is an injection molded fake. And yeah, you could see it fairly easily. Whoops, there's another bit of it flown away. I don't care, this thing's garbage easy to spot. What isn't easy to spot is the smaller stuff. Now, when you buy action figures online and they say it's complete, what happens when it turns up and you're not totally sure about the gun it's got with it, or the staff, or whatever other small piece, helmets, gloves, anything like that? How the hell do you tell whether it's a 3D printed knockoff or the real McCoy? Now, I'm not here to basically rant about the rights and wrongs of copying things. If you have got an action figure and you want a gun for it to hold, you're perfectly within your rights to print one off and put it on there so it looks nice in your display cabinet. What you can't do, and what I absolutely hate, is people who sell them pretending they're the real thing. And yeah, there are people out there who do that. So yeah, this ain't about rights and wrongs. It's basically about, could you tell the difference between them and how easy is it to spot a fraud? How easy is it to spot that cuckoo in your Star Wars Kenner gun nest? There's a weird analogy for you. Cuckoos, like, they sneak into nests and pretend to be one thing that they're not. I, I don't know animals. So let's jump in and see one. How easy is it to find SDL files for Star Wars Kenner action figures? Two. How easy is it to, to print them and make them look good? And three, how do they stack up compared to the originals? Before we do, however, thanks to everyone who has liked to subscribe. There's loads more of you now, which is brilliant. We're almost at a thousand. Let's make that final 120 rush to get to 1000. Because for some reason, it's vitally important that I get to 1000. If you haven't subscribed, drag your cursor down, click on the subscribe button. It's an original subscribe button. Don't click on the copy. You don't want that. You don't. You don't. You don't want the the, the 3D printed one. You want the original one. It's red. It says subscribe on it. Give that a click, and click the bell button next to it so you're always updated for when I upload a original video. Beware of imposters. Okay, so let's get on and print ourselves some replica Star Wars Kenner guns and see how easy it is to print them, how easy it is to get them, and how to spot them from the originals. Let's give this a print. Okay, so let's start with putting some uh, supports on these. I usually use the auto-generated supports and then add my own as well to make sure nothing sags. Uh, this is the uh, Imperial Blasters and the other blast section. There's also a few lightsabers on there as well. We'll give those a look in a bit. As with all UV resin, you have to bake it. So while that's baking, let's start on the uh, FDM printer. This is the Ender 3S1. And it's a direct drive printer, so uh, you get a really nice effect with it. And as with all printing things like this, you have to have supports. And yeah, that's where you're going to get the most uh, marking and most uh, noticeable glitches and defects on any uh, replacement blast as you print. That's going to be removing the support material. So I've done as little support material as I can. And uh, yeah, you got a close up look here. It sort of prints the shape of the uh, the basic blaster weapons and then the uh, blaster weapons are then printed on top of that with very, very, very weak links so you can snap them off. But yeah, with a bit of sanding that usually comes off as well. 
Okay, yeah, watching the printing bit is the most boring bit, so let's speed that up a bit, and we will see what it looks like once we have removed the support material after these have finished printing. Right, let's start with the staffs. I use needle nose pliers just so I can get a little bit of grip on them. Twist and pull, and there we are. The support material comes away. With a bit of sanding, these uh, staffs and guns should look great. Yep, just carefully remove the heads, and there we go. Right, as you can see, I have got through quite a few of these now, and they are all starting to look good. I've done the hand blaster, I've done the... Uh, Hoth Blaster, I've done a couple of gaffy sticks, I've done a rifle, and I've done one of the handheld uh, lightsabers from later on in the series. So yeah, these are starting to look really, really good. Just finish up on this one, and then we can go on and do some comparisons. Okay, yeah, these are now fully finished. We've got some uh, of the staffs and the blasters. I think this is the Speeder Bike uh, Biker Scout Blaster. This has been used for several different um, characters. And we've got the Hoth uh, Rebel Rifle, I believe. Now, this is all well and good, but without a comparison to the actual blasters themselves, you're pretty much guessing whether or not these things look anywhere near as good as the uh, originals. And basically how they all stack up. So, with uh, these all freed from their support material and the uh, UV resin versions uh, all baked and cured, uh, I haven't painted them because I want them to look very different when I do the next section, and that is comparing them to the originals. Now, one of my local collectors um, said, hey, come down to the shop and you can come and compare the originals to the printed ones. So, yeah, I popped down there earlier this week. And, yeah, let's do a comparison and see what they look like compared to the original ones. So let's start with the Biker Scout Gang. At the top you've got the original. Second one down you have got the resin and at the bottom you have got the uh, FDM printing one. This is the one printed on the uh, Creality Ender 3. This is printed on the Creality LD0002 and the top one is the real one. You'll notice the top one is crisp. It's got lots of detail. The other two you can see the second one down is a little softer. It's a little smushier. It hasn't got the crisp bite to it. I imagine a more expensive printer may actually get that better but yeah that's what you've got to look out for if you're buying and selling these things. Make sure they are crisp. Also the bottom one you can see a lot of support material on it. It's been sanded so that takes a lot of the detail off it as well so yeah and also on the back there that's the bottom of it where you can see where the support material has been moved. Okay, let's move on to one of the blasters. Now, this one's been used for everything from uh, the later hand solos through to some of the aliens and a lot of the other characters as well. Notice how the trigger on the original, which one at the bottom, it's got a flat piece at the front that is not on the copy. And also, you notice at the front as well, the cone is pointing slightly down on the original, whereas it is straight on the copy. And also the scaling is slightly different, although you can adapt that if you make some changes to the files. But yeah, you can see that, yeah, there's definite, definite differences between the two. Now, this is the Rebel Hoth rifle. Now, this is very, very close. And yeah, this is comparing the original to the FDM printer, the uh, Creality printer. Just focus in so you can get a better look. There we go. And yeah, they are very, very similar. And with a more expensive printer, you could probably get a very, very good um, recording of that. Now, this is the version, but printed in resin. And yeah, they are very, very similar. There's not a lot of differences, but you can still see the pock marks. But you've got a bit of sample from there. You can remove those fairly easily as well. Now, here is a staff. Bottom one is printed using the... Uh, Creality FDM printer and the top one is the original. You can see differences, but mostly it is the marks caused by printing that gives it away. OK, so let's take a closer look at these prints. Uh, the ones in white are the ones from the Creality uh, PLA printer and the ones in grey are resin. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can get a closer look. This is uh, one of the guns from the guys from the Cantina. It's also been used for Zuckus and a few others as well, I believe. 
And yeah, you'll notice that on the front it's smooth and detailed and on the back there's some damage where I've removed the support material. This is something you can always look out for. If you're, doing, if you're wondering whether a gun is 3D printed or not, just make sure both sides are uh, of the same kind of quality. Other things you can look out for as well is the level of detail. Uh, the 3D printed ones are usually slightly less sharp, slightly softer, and they won't have the uh, the same detailing that the originals have. Uh, it'll have different detailing, they'll have different knobs and buttons and uh, features in different places, and yeah, they'll, they'll uh, not look quite the same, and uh, yeah, you, you should be able to tell by looking at them that there's just, just something slightly off about them if you find one on a car boot sale or a collector and you're looking at anything, you know what, that gun isn't quite quite what I expect. Uh, same thing with the with the Jawa rifle. Uh, it is okay, it looks alright, but yeah, the original has a lot more detail to it. The rivets on here are quite flat and they're not quite as detailed as with this blaster here. Uh, at first glance it looks okay, but yeah, Perhaps giving it a quick look, it is not quite the same. Now, moving across to the resin prints. Let's have a look at these here. This is the Imperial Stormtrooper Blaster. Uh, as you'll notice, it, the detail just looks a bit soft. When you print with resin, um, it just has a little edge to it where you can just say, you know what, it's not quite it's not quite there. Whereas injection moulding, it's uh, usually a bit more pronounced. Also, um, the files available um, are, are the same. I've looked all over the internet and uh, all the files I found were all pretty much the same files made by what I assume is the same person. Um, I can't find any other versions of this particular gun, just this one. So yeah, if you keep a look out for ones which aren't quite as sharp and aren't qu don't quite look as good as the originals, you know it's a 3D print. This is a layers gun here. It's also been used by a few others as well. And same thing with it, it looks a bit flat, it's the right shape, it's got the right idea, there's hints of the design, but it's not quite there. Now, this is the, excuse me one second, flip it over, this is the rifle for the Hoth Troopers, and yeah, it looks very, very good. Uh, if there's a few lumps and bumps on there, but basically a bit of sandpaper on there, those will come straight off, and this would look very, very similar. Be very careful when you're buying this one. It's um, it's a good print. There are a few differences. Uh, there's more detailing on the original. Another thing as well is you notice that these prints are lighter. Uh, if you buy a 3D print which is uh, made out of PLA, which is the material that FGM printers use, or they also use other ABS and things like that, but they may very well be lighter because the material uh, is printed in layers, so there's air in there as well, and they're usually printed at about sort of like 20% volume which means that the outside is solid but inside it's a little bit hollow so yeah if you feel them and they don't feel particularly uh, heavy then yeah that is uh, a good giveaway so yeah look out for the look out for the lightness look out for the uh, texture as well so yeah compare this it should be quite heavy, it looks like it should be quite heavy, but no, it's got very little weight to it. You can also bounce it. If you bounce it and it feels off, then yeah, don't buy it, it's not an original. Not quite the same with resin printers. Resin you can print 100% um, and it's quite heavy, so there's not uh, the lightness that you get with this particular copy here, which is done on a PLA printer. Another thing you can do as well, which I don't recommend, but it actually works, is if you've got one you think is resin, give it a little scratch see if it feels like resin because resin feels very different to uh, plastic and rubber another thing you can do as well is you can and i wouldn't recommend this if you bend it resin bends very differently to rubber or injection molded plastic you see it just snaps it snaps like it's made out of uh, glass or plaster it'll just crack straight away and yeah if it cracks and leaves a, leaves a clean break, then you know that it's probably resin. Whereas injection molded plastic just bends and it, it won't actually snap. But yeah, be careful when you're doing that. Don't do it in front of somebody because yeah, if it does break, uh, you're going to end up paying for it. Now, this is a gaffy stick. And yeah, it looks very, very good. Except for that, once again, you can see the layer lines. 
Um, you'll notice I've also printed these on white plastic. Um, I did this so I could tell them apart from the originals, but um, quite frankly, you can tell them apart fairly simply. Um, but yeah, look out for layer lines and also look out for painting. If somebody is basically printed a load of these in the same color, they will then paint them to make them look like the originals. If you're not totally sure that it's um, in the original plastic, get your nail, give it a scratch. If the paint comes off, it's a fake because the original guns were not painted. They were printed off in injection molded plastic and were never painted. Now moving on to lightsabers. Now say you haven't got the uh, injection lines down the side, so that's a dead giveaway. If it's got injection lines, it's injection molded and probably real. If you've got uh, smooth, smooth um, sides and it looks a little bit soft, as I said earlier, softness is a dead giveaway when it comes to printing. If it's soft, it may possibly be a copy. So yeah, as you can see, it's fairly easy to print copies of Star Wars action figure guns. Whether or not it's right or wrong is nothing to do with me. I just liked one because I wanted one for my hand Solo action figure. This is the one I've had since I was about 12 and I absolutely love it. I lost the gun for it. I wanted him to have a gun. I didn't want to buy an original because I'm not particularly picky. What I won't be doing, however, is selling him on with a gun pretending that it's real. If I ever do sell him, this gun is being snapped in half and thrown away so it doesn't get mixed up or anyone gets confused by it later. So yeah, if you do print these, you're on your honor. Do not sell them as originals and make sure when you finish with them, maybe snap them or paint them luminous green just to make sure they don't get mixed up the ecosystem and cause somebody else a load of pain later. So from me, Ben at 3D Printed Soup, from Ropey Boba Fett, and from 3D printed Han Solo gun, stay happy, stay safe, keep printing. Thank you.